Welcome back to another episode of Azure DevOps. In our last episode, we have learned how to use an YAML file to define our pipeline. However, all the values were hard coded into our pipeline scripts. But in real world, we would need few dynamic parts or runtime values. Let me introduce you as your pipeline variables, variable groups, secret files, etc. Let's jump to the exercise directly and see how those actually works. Once you log in to your Azure DevOps console, go to your project, go to pipelines. And if you remember our last episode, we have created episode number two pipeline using YAML. Now let us go to library from the left side console. Here is one option called variable groups. One variable group can contain multiple variables you can define any value. For example, you can store a password. You can store any runtime value in variable groups. So by saying that, let's create one variable group now. Let me name it as top secret. I want to store some secrets. And after that, click on this small add button, whatever variable name you need. For example, I need a variable. I am going to explain all of those things together. Now I'm creating a variable which is called file password. And let me put a password which looks like something is thus one, two, three, four, something like that. It can be anything. Now the value is plain text. Once you lock it and save this value. Now if I try to unlock it, you see my value is gone. Let me put the value again. Let me lock and save it. You can have multiple variables as well in a group. Let it be a text value only. Save it. Now we have successfully created a variable group. Just after that, there is one option called secure files. You can store your certificates, SSH keys or GCP service account key in JSON. So I am going to upload my GCP service account key here now. Click on secure file, this plus button. Click on browse. I have already downloaded my key. I'll paste a link of my existing video where I explained GCP service accounts, how to create keys, how to enable it. And along with that, I have explained how to use it with Terraform. Click on open, click on OK. Now my file is uploaded. You cannot see the value here. You can define pipeline permissions. So as of now, I have not created any pipeline for episode three. Now let me come to pipelines and I want to create a new pipeline for this episode. New pipeline. And for this case, I'll be using Azure repo git. And this is my repo name Das Learning. And the fourth option I'm going to take existing as your pipelines ML file because I have already created the plain ML file. I'll just show you how it looks like and what it does. Click on this one. Select your branch. I do have only one branch now. Main is fine. And this is my DevOps episode three. This ML file I'm going to take. Click and continue. Let me remove this trigger part now. I'll explain in next video. Let me save this file. And it has created a default name with Das Learning, which I do not want. Let me go to edit again. Unfortunately, I have to go to triggers to do all of those things. Click on triggers. Let me change the name to episode three, for example. And for now, let me save it. And if I come back to pipelines again, click on all and here is my episode three. I'm going to click on edit again. I'll show you how to use pipeline variables as well. So let me create two variables for this pipeline only. Let me click on this variable button here, new variable. And I want to put some specific names. I want this project ID and this project ID is my GCP project ID. This is fine as a plain text. Click on OK. I want to add another variable and name of that should be bucket name and any name which I want, maybe thus learning DevOps episode three, something like that. And this may not be a secret value. That's fine. Click on OK. Click on save. Now let me explain you what I'm going to do from this pipeline. If you remember our last episode, we have used our pool, which is with Ubuntu latest. And last time also we have used bash, nothing to explain more. Now what I'm going to use a file path to a bash script. And let me show you what this file does actually. So under scripts, I do have a folder called bash. And here is a file called zip.sh. So basically I'm running a zip command. This is my password. I'm giving a password to that zip file, the name of the zip file, which I want to store. And lastly, which folder or file I want to include in that zip file. And if I explain it from the pipeline, it is calling this zip.sh. I am passing two arguments here. If you see first one and the second one. So all the arguments will be a space separated. And what is this one file password? Let me show you. And if I go to library again, if I go to variable groups and this is my file password, this variable I want to pass whichever value I've given. But before that, I need to do one thing. Click on pipeline permissions for this variable group. 
So no pipelines are permitted as of now. Click on this plus icon. Click on episode 3. This is my new pipeline which I want to authenticate with this one and it should be able to access it and you just close it. Let me re-verify if it is showing again or not. Yeah, it's there. Come to your pipeline. I am already into edit mode. What I can do? I can go to triggers because I have to map that variable group to my pipeline. Click on variables and these are my two variables which I have created directly on the pipeline. And if I click on variable groups, you'll see nothing is linked as of now. I can click on link variable group and this is my top secret which I want to link. This is my variable group name and link. I do not want to run as of now. Let me save it. It is saved now. Let me go to pipelines episode 3. This is my data files or directory and inside that there is one file called episode 3. So this file will be added into the zip file. Now my second part is I want to download a secure file and this is my task download secure file. I'll put all those codes in my GitHub account. Then name of this task. It should be unique in your pipeline. For example, the first one name is zip. It can be anything, but it should be unique and any display name then input. If I go to library, if I go to secure file and my file name is gcpkey.json. That is what I want to download because this file will be needed in order to authenticate with GCP. Now I am running basically a Terraform script and this is located in Terraform GCP as your DevOps episode 3. Let me show you what it does actually. So this is my location and this is my file. Simply I have defined a provider which is Google and I am going to create one bucket as simple as that. And I am taking the variable bucket name and let me show you the where file as well. So I need a project ID and a bucket name as part of this variable and I do not have any TA words or any default value defined on these variables. That means I have to pass these values from somewhere. And what I've done, you can provide runtime variables using tf underscore where underscore your variable name. That means two variables I need, which is project ID and bucket name. And I'm getting the value from pipeline variable. How do I get this? If I go to pipelines episode three, if I go to variables, this is my bucket name and this is my project ID. And you have to denote it with dollar and parenthesis like this. And I need to get my Google application credentials. That means path to my JSON file or the key file. And I'm giving a value called GCP JSON dot secure file path. Now what's this one? This GCP JSON is the name of the previous task where I have downloaded a secure file. And there is one property is called secure file path, which is defined by Microsoft Azure itself. So if you put this one, wherever the file is downloaded, it will just set it in the environment variable called Google application credentials. This will be needed for any Terraform or maybe any scripts to run or authenticate with GCP. Next, what I'm doing, I'm doing Terraform init. I'm doing the Terraform plan and then I'm applying it. That means it will create a bucket for me. And this is my bucket name and this is my project ID. And let me go to my GCP console just to show you. Ignore the previous bucket. I'm going to create a new bucket which is named as Das Learning DevOps Episode 3, something like that. Next, what I'm doing, I'm using pip to install Google Cloud library for my Python. And I wanted to show you, we can mix any kind of programming language in a single pipeline. For example, first one, I'm using a bash or shell script. Second one, I'm downloading a file. Next again, I'm using a bash. You can very well use any other plugins, for example, Terraform or any other plugin. Next, I'm using a Python. And in Python, I'm defining a path which Python file I want to execute and that is under scripts Python and GCS upload using my bucket.tf or Terraform. I'm creating a bucket. Next, I want to upload my zip file, which I have done using that zip.sh. I want to upload that file to my storage bucket. Here I'm using two arguments for this Python file while executing this one. I'll be passing Google application credentials, similarly, which we have seen for Terraform form same thing i'm passing here gcp json dot secure file path so this is my first argument and the second argument is my bucket name this is completely dynamic i have not written any hard coded here that name should be coming from bucket name which is pipeline variable okay just to summarize this two project id and bucket name is pipeline variable local to the pipeline only this one is my secure file which i'm downloading from the previous task here and while zipping i'm using a file password variable from a variable group there is a mix of everything which i wanted to explain to you let me go to console all pipelines let me run it now click on run 
main branch and everything is fine click on run and it is showing i need to provide permissions to resources let me check it and i need to permit it yeah i forgot it so whenever you have any key file or anything uploaded you can go into that file you can click on pipeline permissions now you will see my pipeline is appearing but previously you can do it from this plus icon so i'm just going to close it my job is running let me click on this job all jobs are finished now let me click on this zip data file how the name is coming so this is nothing but my display name which i have defined here if you do not define this it will just come as bash so for example this line number 21 this does not have any display name if i go to my console it will show you just a bash so it is doing the zip and data.zip is present there now next bash that means my terraform job is happening terraform initialized it is going to create one bucket creation is successful after that i've ran pip install google cloud module or library that installation is successful and if i go to python script that has also uploaded the file the zip file let me go to so as of now it has not appeared that means my bucket let me refresh and this is my new bucket let me go there and how it is structured let me show you so this is a folder or directory structure and this is my file name let me download it it has now downloaded let me open it and if i open it somehow it zips entire directory but yeah let me go inside data files and if i try to open this one episode3.txt you see it needs a password and if i put any random value it will show you password incorrect i think it was as thus one two three four something like that yes now i can unzip it so that's a very simple exercise i wanted to demonstrate how to use runtime variables variable groups secret files so we can treat this pipeline a startup of a build job for example i'm doing any compilation which is my zip part it can be anything for you then you can deploy your resources on the cloud or wherever it is then you can deploy your code for example i'm copying that code or maybe zip file to my bucket and you can customize anything whichever you want for example if i go to pipelines episode 3 if i click on edit and i can modify anything even graphically if i if i click on this little settings button for this bash i can change the values similarly for example if i want to use it again i can copy paste this value or maybe i can search it here download secure file and whichever file you need retry count and maybe test.key or test.json if you click on add so your next task is added so you can do whatever you like if you want a python you can take python for example i've taken this one yeah you can use whatever plugin is available or you can even browse marketplace by saying that let's wrap up this course and thanks again see you in the next video